Shane Hayden. Can, can I just ask you about, um, I think Saturday was your first game, competitive game yeah. since the Belgium game in March. Can you talk us through that, how difficult has it been at the club level? Um, and what does the future hold for you this summer? Do you, do you look to move on? Um, yeah, I haven't played a lot, so it's been a couple of things. I've, I've had a few niggles um, from, from March, and um, another thing is I couldn't, I couldn't get into a team that was playing so well, and a team that finished ninth in the Premier League, the highest position in the club's history. So uh, I had to play my part around the place with the team and, and sort of use my experience with helping people around and, and getting us over the line. But um, difficult not playing every week, every footballer will tell you that. So uh, just got to keep my head down and, and keep going. So in, and on the future, um, I'm not really focused so much yet. I've got three three more huge games for my country they, they try and focus on and that's what I'm what I'm fully focused on so um, I think I'll sit down with the club after this camp and I know I need to be playing regular they, to be involved they play for my country which is probably a massive the biggest thing for me to be to be available and playing my best football for Ireland so um, I know I need to be playing football every week so uh, as I said these three games and then I'll sit down with the club and, and we'll, we'll figure out which is the best option for us if, if um, it's going forward. Dan, please. Stephen, I, I know you said previously you see Chidozi as more of an attacker maybe than a, a right wing back, but you did move him out there in the final stages on Saturday. And with Seamus being out, is that something, is he in your thinking for that position now, or is it more of a, I so suppose Cyrus is obviously more natural maybe? Yeah, I think Chidozi's been in great form in, in, you know, in the position that he's played in the front three. I think probably consistently he's been one of our better players over the last number of games. And um, he gives us pace in the final third for sure. You know, he gives us a real cut and edge sort of play. Um, and more so against the team, you know, teams that come and play against you. Um, certainly, you know, so... Um, as a wing back, he's still learning that. You know, he plays it for his club. They play differently. Um, so we find that he's more effective in the front three for us, for sure. We have other options. And um, Cyrus Christie comes into consideration, strong consideration, of course. Uh, Festi Abosele um, comes into consideration. And. Um, and Alan Brown can play there as well, so we have to um, we have to consider all of that. Um, thank you, uh, Stephen. Um, you said Ukraine play four three three. Um, Brian Kerr on Virgin Media after the match on Sunday or on Saturday, he made an observation that he thought Ireland might be better, Ireland might be better off with three in midfield, central midfield. Uh, is that something you might consider changing? Or are you happy with the formation that you have? Three in midfield. Three in central midfield. Yeah. Um, or we have two. Are you, are you think, would you, he made an observation that he felt he thought we might be a little bit light, maybe three instead of midfield. Yeah, might be no, Is that something you might consider? I don't, you know, I, I understand that point of view. I think, uh, but we've seen with Portugal, they play the same system as Portugal, and Luxembourg both play the same system. Obviously, Portugal are at a higher level than Luxembourg, but Portugal play 4 2 3, and as Ukraine do. So, we played that system, we were quite effective, so tactically there's things that we can sort of do to counteract the extra man in midfield and we, we can overload in other areas ourselves. So um, Portugal is a good template for that uh, performance here. Uh, it's a good template for, for the possibilities against Ukraine. But we can't be sure that they, like at five out of our seven games before the weekend actually, they played 3-4-2-1 um, Ukraine. So, um, so we can't be certain that they will play 4-3-3 um, because they have players who can adapt to, adapt to that. You know, they, they recently went back to 4-3-3, I think because they've got so many good midfield players and to accommodate the midfield players. But this manager, the coach in question, when they won the World Under-20 um, World Cup, they played 3-4-2-1 all the time. And then in his early, all his, in, in, interim internationals when he took over in the campaign they played 3-4-2-1 so they've recently switched back to 4-3-3 which they had played um, under the previous previous manager in the Euros. Aiden, please. 
Uh, one for Shane. Um, Chidozi up in told us after the game on Saturday that the team, in his view, wasn't ruthless and didn't have a win at all cost mentality, is how we put it. Um, it, it. I just wonder if you agree with them, and if so, like, how do we get that? How do you instill that into a team? I don't think we. Uh, I think we always go out at win at all cost. I think, listen, different opinions, but I think the feeling I have is that we went out there and, and everyone gave everything in the game. It wasn't for the lack of effort and trying, and it was um, it was a night where we didn't we didn't get it right on on the night, and and we've got to accept that as what as what the gaffer said. We. We reflected on it and, and we put it behind us now. They, they move on the big game now on Wednesday. So I think with this group we've got, it's a really special group with players who can who can bounce back. We've got a really good characters in there with young and, uh, and experience, which we come together really well and, and we talk. We're really close to each other. And I think that's good for moments when we did up on Saturday where it wasn't our night, and we didn't, and we didn't get what we wanted. So um, we bounced back. We stuck together in, in the camp all week, and um, we're really excited. I think we've got a really strong squad. They they help each other out, and and that's what we're looking to do going uh, and going forward tomorrow night. Get the final two questions from Paul, and then Alan, please. Yeah, Stephen, um, you're saying that you won't make wholesale changes, but are you looking at maybe attack? one area to, to make changes because in the second half that area of the team faded quite significantly as the game went on and just a second one then even if, if the Ireland under 21 situation is resolved on Thursday as it may be with the Sweden uh, Italy game would you then be tempted to bring in Will Smallbone? Um, on the fourth one it's one of the, one of the significant things that's helped us in, in all the matches recently over the period, say, has been the impact of our substitutes has been positive. You know, I think uh, obviously Jason Knight in Luxembourg, Troy Parrott in the last game, game, Alan Brown coming on getting the, the equalizer against Belgium, and going back a bit, substitutes have come on making a positive impact. But probably it's the first game that ha didn't happen to us, you're looking at it. So it wasn't that we faded so much. We, when we made the changes, we didn't, ha we didn't have the impact that we would have wanted. So I'd say that would. That would uh, that, that's something that we can, that criticism that can be levelled at us for sure. Um, um, the, the Will Smallbone um, situation, I um, have to reflect on it. it you know, we've had a good game yesterday, I just want to focus on playing well against a really good Italian team and, and, and see how he gets on. I'm not, I'm not in a hurry to, to make too many changes here at the moment. Finally, Alan, please. Uh, hey, Stephen, what are your ambitions for this Nations League? Is tomorrow a must win or a must not lose? Win. You know, I th listen, I th we, we, we want to try and win the game. Um, it's, you know, Ukraine, whatever team Ukraine put out, they'll be top class players. Um, they play with a swagger and, you know, they, they have a lot of te high technical level. Um, it's a game we want to win. Um, we'll have a passionate, have passionate crowd here that'll, that'll help, help the players. And we want, to, we, want to, we want to try and win the game and we'll do everything. Um, as I said, we, we had a setback. We're disappointed ourselves on, on Saturday. We want to bounce back in the right way tomorrow night.